Hello guys, in this video I want to present a new release of PEST 2.9 that was released and presented during Laracon US this summer with quite a few new features. They call it spicy summer release. And in this case I decided not to showcase myself but be like a proper journalist, go out in the field and find the examples on Twitter and elsewhere, on GitHub for example, how people use those features and what do they think about those features. So I want to start with Drift Plugin, which is not the exact order they present the features. This is actually the last thing they presented, Drift, which is for migrating from PHP Unit to PEST. So if you use PHP Unit, now with PEST you can migrate automatically, and it's called Drift Plugin. And on Twitter, Soren showed that Drift Plugin in action with success rate of 94% of migration. So now it comes with PEST automatically for free, but before that we for example used PEST Converter from Laravel Shift. It costs $9 at the moment, maybe it will change in the future. So we tried that out as part of our course. So we had a course to recreate the Booking.com API and first we wrote the tests with PHP Unit and then tried PHP Unit to PEST Converter. It's pretty good. It changed the syntax from PHP Unit to PEST with only some manual changes needed. So now you can do it with the PEST itself with Drift plugin. And speaking of PHP Unit versus PEST, fun fact, Taylor made a poll on Twitter asking what should be the default framework in upcoming Laravel 11 and the results are pretty close. So 54 PEST and 45 PHP Unit, but I would interpret that as equal. But now you can migrate easier. And by the way, if you haven't started testing at all, I have a separate course for beginners about PHP unit and PEST and TDD, and I will link that in the description below. Now let's get back to new features of PEST. The new version 2.9 has type coverage. So what percentage of functions have types? And types became a big thing in Laravel 10, and I have a separate video on that, and I will link that in the description below. So which percentage of your classes, for example, have return types and types for variables. And this is also an example from Twitter by Francisco Madeira. So in some files there's 100% coverage of types, in other files it may be lower than 100. So this is a new thing, a plugin to PEST that you can automatically test whether all your files are with types. Next thing called built-in snapshot testing. And built-in is important part. So snapshot testing means that you run the test once for some feature, for example, and the result of that test is saved in the file system. And then the second time that test runs, it compares the result with that result from the first attempt. And the test would fail if those so-called snapshots are not identical which means if the same feature, the same function returned different results from it used to be, it may be a bug. So a simple example, contact page should be the same in the future. And that built-in thing is important because in PHP unit there is no snapshot testing in the same way. What I found is that Spotty has a plugin, a package like they have for everything, there's PHP unit snapshot assertions. So with PHP unit, you have to have a special package to do something like this with snapshots. And it is pretty popular with 500 stars. So a lot of people use snapshot testing apparently, and now PEST has that built in. The next new feature is described blocks. They allow you to kind of separate the groups of your testing, for example, for auth, then for guest, and whatever group you have. It is kind of a workaround, in my opinion, actually, I will use my interpretation here. Since PEST moves you away from classes like PHP unit, then it's hard to group those tests. So one of the ways of grouping is with describe now. And historically, since PEST is inspired by Jest framework, people started requesting that describe for a very long time from the very beginning of PEST. So I found the post, the GitHub issue from 2020. And now three years later, that describe actually appeared in PEST as well. So it's not really comparable to PHP unit as I always do with PEST. It's more comparable to the so-called functional testing frameworks like Jest. And the result of this is something like this. So it would show a group of mobile authentication and then the test name. So describe blocks in short is a way of grouping your tests. 
And the final thing I wanted to show you is architectural testing plugin, which existed before 2.9, but now it got more features. And here's where I turned on my full journalist cap and started looking for more examples of how people actually use that, because it gives you quite a big power to expect that some types or some classes have something, but what are the real practical examples? And this is an example why it's beneficial for me to not only recreate my own examples for YouTube videos, but get out of my own bubble and see how people actually use stuff. I may learn a thing or two as well. So this is an example of Crodox on Twitter. So expect models to be used only in app repository namespace. So models are not allowed to be used outside of this namespace. Quite an interesting use case if you have repository pattern. Another example, expect ENV not to be used anywhere. So ENV should be used only in config files. And I have a separate video on that, by the way, and I will link that in the description below. All Laravel app folder should use only config method and not directly ENV. So this can be tested by PEST as well. Then another example by Wendell. I very like that one. I retweeted that. It's kind of a meta. You can test that the tests are actually tests. To have suffix test, this is the main thing. Because a few times I've seen online people complaining and asking why my tests are not running and they were naming the test classes or test methods not in a standard format like with suffix test and with test prefix for the method itself. So this can be also tested now. And also an example by Ludovic, or in fact, a few examples in one, ensures there is no DD, ensures strict types, and ensures that controllers extend nothing. You can use controllers without extends controller. So yeah, these are just practical examples of architectural testing plugin in PEST. So yeah, this is the release of PEST Spicy Summer version 2.9. I will link this original release article in the description below so you can dive deeper or explore other features of PEST. What do you think? Will you use PEST if you haven't yet? Like, will you migrate from PHP unit to PEST? Or will this release and these features maybe push you towards start testing in the first place? Let's discuss in the comments below. And see you guys in other videos.